Welcome to the Year of the Spirit Life, where we are experiencing the Zoe, which is the God kind of life, the kingdom life. That is why I'm bringing to you kingdom divine messages that are meant to transform your mentality and to transform your mindset for you to be able to live according to God's original plan of dominion and rulership. So grab your Bible, your notebook, and your pen for you to write down the vision that you are going to walk through in this coming year. Be blessed as you watch. Thank you for joining us for another spirit-filled message with Prophet Fadzai brought to you by Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide. We bring comfort to God's people through the revelation of the word and prayer. We hope that this message will be a blessing to you and help you understand the kingdom and enjoy the spirit life. Now, let's get into the message. Say thank you, Jesus, for what I'm going to listen to today is going to transform my mind, my heart, my spirit, my body, my soul to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus one more time. Good morning, church. Are you not happy? Good morning, church. Tell your neighbor you are fruitful. Tell your other neighbor. Ezekiel 37. Let me read it from my Bible. Very common scripture. We all know it. Ezekiel chapter 37. Verse number 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh or skin come upon you and cover you. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I was prophesying. As I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together bone to bone. I looked at tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Verse number 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, feet a vast army. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this divine word. Let it be a blessing to us this morning, and let it be a prophetic message as it is already that shall usher us into a new season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want you to just listen very carefully for the next few minutes. This is a very common scripture that we all know. The dry bones in the valley. And from verse 1 we read that the servant of God was led by the Spirit and he saw bones in a valley. And then the Lord asked him, Son of man, can these bones live again? And then 
the prophet replied God and said to him, only you know. Hallelujah. And then God went back to him and said, okay, now I want you to go and prophesy. This is the first lesson you must get from this powerful scripture, that when God sent the prophet to say, can these bones live again? The prophet did not use his experience, his knowledge, his qualification to determine if the bones can live again. He said, only you, God, know. If you want God to usher you into any divine season, you must submit to his will. Many times we are submitting to our own will and we push aside the will of God. We are trying to bring forth dry bones into existence by our experience, our gifts, our strength, our power, and our history. And we are not submitting to the will of God. So the man of God understood that for him to prosper, hallelujah, for him to prosper in anything that God is requiring him to do, He needs to submit to his will. Ask your neighbor, are you submitting to God's will? Many of you in this place, you might have seen this ministry online and then you decided to come. Everyone can do that. But after you saw it online, was it God's will for you to be here? Ask your neighbor, was it God's will or is it God's will for you to be here? Why is that question important? Because you have been to many other places and then later you realize that I'm in a wrong place. So if it was God's will for you to be in those places, why then did they become bad? Which means sometimes we enter places at our own will, not God's will. Because if it's God's will, God's will will keep you in a place until you flourish. So Elijah submitted himself, I mean Ezekiel submitted himself to the will of God. And when he did that, God did not prophesy to the bones. He still went back to him and said, now let's work together. Now you can say one, two, three things. And things will happen. Many of us, the reason why we have failed in certain projects, it is because we entered those projects alone. On our own. Your friend entered a certain business and they are prospering because they have a grace for that business. And you copy them. You also enter into that business and you fail. So you entered it not by the will of God, but by the will of your surroundings. Are you understanding? So the man of God was told, prophesy to the dry bones. Prophesy to them that I'm going to breathe unto them life and I'm going to bring forth flesh and tendons upon these bones so that I can, at the end of the scripture if you read it says so that I can so, so that God can raise a vast army by reason of the prophetic I don't know if you are one of the dry bones that I'm ministering today but I know that by the end of this service Dry bones are rising again in the name of Jesus. Dry bones are rising again in the name of Jesus. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So God is not the one that went to the dry bones. He still used the same Ezekiel. Why? Because Ezekiel had submitted to God's power. Let me give you a secret. For you to be powerful, 
you must submit under a power. Many of us are trying to be powerful on our own and we keep on failing. The secret to be powerful is to submit under power. So if you want to experience power in your life, sometimes you need to submit under a certain power. Am I speaking to somebody? So he was given a prophecy to prophesy that to the bones and say to them that hear the word of the Lord, verse number five. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Prophecy number one. Number two, I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. Number two, I will put the breath in you and you will come to life. So God's plan was to bring life to the dry bones. God's plan is to bring life to any situation in your life that is dry. That is God's plan. That is God's idea. Am I speaking to somebody? So when Ezekiel started prophesying, next scripture, I want the church to understand scripture by scripture. When Ezekiel started prophesying, there was a noise. Let me stop here a bit. Each time there is a prophetic word that is about to manifest in your life, there is always a noise. Each time when God is about to manifest his power in your life, there is always a noise. What do I mean? People can start talking about things to distract you from reaching your manifestation. There will always be stories that start coming. Things that start coming. There will always be a sound. There will always be a noise. There will always be a rattling sound. Am I speaking to somebody? Each time you hear too many voices around you starting to speak from nowhere, no, it is my time of manifestation. So when he started prophesying, listen to this, before he prophesied, there was no noise, there was no sound. Only when a word was released, trouble came, noise came, rattling sound came. Many of us have received prophetic words. Even when I'm preaching to you right now, I'm speaking a prophetic word in someone's life. The moment that word to usher you into your season comes, it is always accompanied by noise. Accompanied by rattling sounds. But if you are determined to know where God is taking you, you ignore the voices, you ignore the sounds, and hold on to what God is going to do in your life. My message today is on what happened after. And the bones came together, born to born. Tell your neighbor, born to born. So the man of God, sent by God directly, prophesies to the bones that life is coming, the skin is coming, the flesh is coming, and the breath of life is coming upon you. But what happened is that life did not come immediately. The Bible is saying the bone started moving to the next bone. So whenever God prophesies upon someone's life, order begins to take place. There is a movement that starts to happen. Many of us, we have missed it. Because when the prophetic word comes today, you are expecting the life to happen immediately. But there is always a process that leads to the life. Bone started moving, bone to bone. The prophecy did not say have order. The prophecy spoke about life. What does that teach you as a believer today? Each time you have the word, each time you have a prophetic message, it is your duty as a dry bone to start moving in the valley. Remember, you are not yet out of the valley. You are still a dry bone. 
But movement is required from you. Action is required from you. Moving from this bond to go and connect with another bond. Tell your neighbor, environment is position, I mean, environment is important to attract the manifestation of God's power in your life. Luke chapter 5 says, Jesus went by the seashore and he found boats that were parked there. And then he entered into Simon's Peter's boat. There were many other boats, but he chose to enter into Simon Peter's boat. By my own revelation, according to that scripture, studying that scripture, I realized that Simon Peter's boat was strategically positioned for Jesus to enter into it. So even if the prophecy is there, are you in a position that breath can come to you, skin can come to you, and you have life in you? Are you understanding that? You see, <laughs> you see God is omnipresent. God is all-powerful, all-knowing. But if you study the Bible very well, God always emphasizes on environment. Genesis 12, God tells Abraham, leave your father's house. Go to a land that I will show you and then I will bless you. Why didn't he just bless him in his father's house? He told him, go to a place I will show you. So dry bones have to connect first to make a skeleton before flesh and breath comes to them. Are you understanding them? Are you understanding me? So that movement of the bones, the bones are moving into a certain environment that attracts the prophecy to manifest. Micah 5 verse 2, the prophecy comes and says, in Bethlehem Ephrata, that's where a king is going to be born. Hallelujah. And then now in the book of Matthew or Mark or Luke, it speaks about a lady called Mary. She is pregnant. She received a, pregnant, I mean, a prophecy through an angel out of Bethlehem. You are going to give birth to a Messiah. Now when she was heavily pregnant, situations forced her to change environment and enter Bethlehem and then she gave birth. So she was carrying a prophecy for seven, eight months, but in a wrong environment. She was not going to give birth to Jesus out of Bethlehem because there was a prophecy. So with that big stomach, she was forced to take a move to go to Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy. Most of our prophecies are not manifesting because we are still sitting where we receive the prophecy. We are not moving bone to bone to create a skeleton that attracts the prophetic word. In the book of Kings, God spoke to Elijah. And he said to Elijah, go to a cave in a certain place. And there I will send ravens to feed you. So, which means the prophet, even if he was so prophetic and anointed, if he did not go to the cave, he was going to die of hunger. Let me say it again. God told him, go to a cave, and there I will send ravens to feed you. So, there's a place called there in the life of every believer. There's a place where God tells you, go there and I will bless you. Go to that man of God, and I will bless you. Yeah. And you'll be sitting in the house, you say, God is everywhere. He will touch me here in the bedroom. In the book of Genesis 22, I believe from verse 2 going down there, God spoke to Abraham, take your son Isaac, go and sacrifice him on one of the mountains I will show you. If he had sacrificed him on any mountain, 
the sacrifice was not going to be accepted because there was a certain environment. Are you understanding? Okay, let me give you a simpler uh, example. By nature, God has created fish to stay in the water. So if, if Mr. Fish comes out of the water and he starts declaring that by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm going to have life out of the water, he will die in prayer. He is designed by nature of environment to be blessed in the water. So if he comes out of that environment, no matter how prayerful he is, Mr. Fish, he will die in prayer. Are you understanding? So as a dry bone, you need to move and connect with other bones. There must be a movement. Ask your neighbor, are you moving towards your breakthrough? I have always given this good example. I receive a divine revelation in prayer. Brother Fadzai, you are going to be married to sister so and so. Let me use my wife as an example. You are going to be married to sister Millie. Prophecy has come. Hallelujah. Do you think the Holy Spirit is going to go and bring sister Millie to come in my house? Already wearing a ring. What is needed is for me to take a step to go to Sister Millie. And when I go to Sister Millie, I don't go and speak about the spiritual things that I have received. I just go and apply wisdom. Oh, I am, I'm interested in you, so and so and so and so. So I'm a dry bone because I'm alone. I'm moving to another bone to create a skeleton so that the prophecy of life and flesh and skin comes to manifestation. Did you understand it? Hallelujah. Did you understand it? So if you don't make a move, you can still die in the valley while you are having a prophecy. You can still die in the valley while you are carrying a prophetic message. A valley is simply, for example, two mountains, one on the right and one on the left. And in the middle here is where the bones were. So which means they were covered from, on the left and covered on the right. They could not go on the left, they could not go on the right. But one thing I like about it is God allowed the bones to be in the valley so that one day they will experience their prophetic word in the valley. So sometimes God allows you to enter into a valley so that you can experience his prophetic word and manifestation of his power in the valley. So many of us, when we enter the valley, we think we are under attack. Hallelujah. I gave you a very good example of Adam that when God wanted to create a helper for Adam, he put Adam in a deep sleep. So when Adam was in a deep sleep, a deep sleep, I gave an example many times, that is that sleep around three, half past three. Which hour? Where witches usually travel? Because they know you are in a deep sleep, you are almost as good as dead. So God put Adam to death so that he can bring a helper out of him. So a, a situation like of Adam, of being put in a deep sleep, it does not mean Adam was under attack. God put him there because he knew that tomorrow there is going to be life coming out of this man. So God can still put you in a deep sleep, deep sleep in your career, deep sleep in your marriage, deep sleep in your finances, where things seem as if they are dead. But you will be knowing that out of that dead situation, I'm going to bring forth life. Am I speaking to you? That is why Adam at some point referred to Eve and said, bone of my bone, flesh 
of my flesh. Which means there was a movement that made the other bone to connect to the other bone, to become one. So these bones also moved bone to bone to become one so that the prophecy manifests. Ask your neighbor again, are you making a move? In your spiritual life, are you making a move? In your material life, are you making a move? Financial life, are you making a move? Social life, are you making a move? Please bring back the scripture. So rattling sound and the bones came together. Born to born. Verse 8. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. So you see it's a process. You were dry before but the state you are in now you are no longer dry. There is flesh on you but there is still no life. So many of us, there is a position where God took us from. And we are on another level now. But we are still crying that God has abandoned us. We are not seeing that we were dry at some point. And the bones, the Bible says, they were scattered in the valley. But now, the flesh has come on the body. Which means, it's now a person. But there is still no life. It's the stages of the manifestation. Ask your neighbor, which stage are you in right now? If you have seen that there's an improvement from the dryness of the valley, you must give thanks to God. Instead of complaining, because you are moving towards the manifestation of the prophecy. But we stop the manifestation because we are always complaining. We are always complaining. You simply want the full fullness of it immediately. But there's a process. You came from dry bones. You were scattered. And you were joined together. And now there's flesh. There are tendons together. But still no life. An attitude of gratitude attracts more of God's blessings on your life. Each time God blesses you with a small thing, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm sure in this era of internet, you have seen many stories that trend on internet that there's a quote that someone was crying that, Lord, I do not have shoes until he met someone who did not have feet. So he started appreciating that, I'm crying for shoes. Someone does not even have the foot to put the shoe on. So I'm blessed. Hallelujah. So if you look at your life as a believer, there is a level or a stage that God has taken you from and placed you where you are. It is not the end of the stage. There is still another stage. Remember, it's a vast army that is prepared to be raised. So you are moving from one stage to the next stage. One stage to the next stage. How will you reach the final stage? If you are always complaining, ask your neighbor, how will you reach the final stage if you are always complaining? Believers today, we are always complaining. God, you have abandoned me. You have blessed my friend and you are not blessing me. You have blessed this person and you are not blessing me. You have promoted the one that I, found, that I trained in the company and you are not blessing me. And guess what? What happens 99% of the time? Because of our lack of knowledge of divine revelation in the scriptures, we end up giving credit to the devil. This situation I'm in, it's Satan, it's my family that is fighting me. It's that witch that told me that you are going to see it. Sometimes it is God's will for Jonah to be swallowed by a fish. Sometimes it is God's will for Jonah to be what? But the Jonah in the church today, when they're inside the fish, they are saying, it is because I received a WhatsApp message from that witch. 
So we give credit to the devil where it is not due. Remember what I taught you in the beginning. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. So when the devil sees that, oh, okay, this one, when they hear a cat crying at night, it is already programmed in their life or in their mind that it's witchcraft. So you would find at the end of the day that the biggest witch that you are fighting against is yourself, is your mind. Am I speaking to somebody? It's your mind. We give too much credit to the devil more than we give to God. Imagine, imagine I have a, I have a small daughter. Imagine if I train my daughter that there's no witchcraft, there's no devil, there's no attack. We are just living in the blessings of God. And then she just grows up like that, not knowing that there's anything called attack. Hallelujah. Do you think when something happens in her life, she will look for a fault somewhere? No, because she does not have knowledge about that. She has knowledge that I'm only blessed, is an example. So if, if she finds herself in a season where it's like it's not a, a time of blessing, she will go back to the one who promised us blessing to say, we are in this season, what should we do now? That is why the world teaches us that what, that, what you don't know does not kill you. Is it not true? Yes, what you don't know does not kill you. But in the house of God today, if I do interview all of you here, you would find that you are a Christian, but you have a lot of fear of the devil more than reverence for God. Hallelujah. When you enter prayer, the first thing you talk about is Satan. Hallelujah. When you get a chance to meet a servant of God, the first thing you talk about is the attack that is happening time and again. So we must always be confessing the power of God over our lives. Remember Moses, when God told him that there's, the people are being beaten by snakes. So what must you do? Make a bronze snake and raise it up on the hill. Everyone who comes to you and looks at the snake shall be healed. So when people were coming, Moses would just say, look at the snake. Moses would never say, okay, this, this type of biting is black mamba. This one is green mamba. This one is what? He never focused on the snake that harmed them. The focus was on them looking at the solution. So as a believer, even if you're under attack or even if you're in the dry uh, zone, even if you're in the valley, the main focus is to look upon the one who is prophesying life. He's the one who will tell you why you are in that situation. He's the, why, the one who will tell you why you are experiencing a dry season. Give me back the scripture. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath, come four winds and breathe into these slain that they may Leave. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. I prophesy a vast army is going to stand up in this ministry in the name of Jesus. In this place right now in the name of Jesus. Let a vast army rise up in the name of Jesus. Are you seeing that even though there was a prophecy that was given from the beginning, the prophet kept on receiving new revelations to speak, to keep on encouraging the bonds that we are getting there. We are getting there. That is why we also come to church every Sunday. 
to receive a prophetic message that will push you to the manifestation of the prophecy. So the prophet kept on prophesying as God was commanding him. Not as he was studying the situation. No. As God was commanding him. This is also a message for servants of God who might be here. Sometimes we are pushed to prophesy based on the situation. Or prophesying because you are feeling pity for the person. Ezekiel was prophesying as he was commanded. Am I speaking to you? So the prophecy came and the prophecy spoke to the wind. And the wind brought life into the dry bones. May they be life in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. May they be life in your career. Life in your business. Life in your marriage. Life in your spiritual matters. Life in your ministry. Life in your health. But for the life to come at the end. And for the army to rise at the end. There is always that process. The first process is to take a step. Very important. Where most of us as believers, we miss out. We are always sitting somewhere. We are not taking a step towards the manifestation of the prophecy. If I tell you today that I'm seeing you flying to Dubai as a prophetic word, it is obvious that for you to fly to Dubai, you have to go to the airport because that's where you can catch a plane. You cannot catch a plane at the taxi rank. So if you receive a prophecy of Dubai and you are always found by the taxi rank. Am I speaking to somebody? It is difficult for you to get the flight that will come and pick you when you are at the taxi rank. I'm giving this example to highlight on the environment that attracts the blessing. Remember the message I just taught in the beginning here that Jesus approached a fig tree in his dry season. Dry environment. Tell your neighbor, environment is important. Environment is important to attract God's blessing in your life. I can be highly anointed and called, but if I position myself in the wrong place, location I can be called with a great calling and end up perishing because I'm not in the right location I'm not in the right environment ask your neighbor are you in the right environment to receive the blessing ask your neighbor again are you in the right environment because what is sometimes delaying us is just the wrong environment. Once you change the environment, you easily attract what God wants you to receive. God's desire from the beginning, the spirit life. Remember, we are in the year of the spirit life. His desire was for us to experience his kind of life, the God kind of life, the Zoe kind of life, which is the spirit life. Hallelujah. But when sin came, it removed that kind of lifestyle and we had to toil and sweat for us to eat as the case said in the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. But when Christ came, the Bible says, cursed is everyone who hangs on the cross. So which means Jesus carried the curse of Adam on the cross so that we may return to Genesis spirit life. We may return to Genesis Zoe kind of life. We may return to Genesis the God kind of life. That is why God sent Ezekiel to the dry bones and that is why God has sent me to you today to tell you that we are moving from the valley and raising a new army. 
you are moving from the valley. Let me finish by saying this before we pray. As men, we are looking for green pastures. Every one of us is searching for a greener pasture. Hallelujah. Some of us, we desire to go to a certain country because you believe that if you go to that place, there's a green pasture for you. Some of us, we desire to be married by certain kind of people because you believe if I get married to this type of person, it's a greener pasture for me. But you must learn something from the book of Psalm. The psalmist declares, the Lord is my shepherd. Which means who leads you to green pastures? It's not you. It's, it's the leading of Jesus. It's the leading of God. It's the leading of a shepherd. So even as you are a servant in the house of God or a disciple, what determines mostly how you are going to get green pastures is the one who is shepherding you. The scripture said, the Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want. So the shepherd is the one that leads the sheep to the green pastures. Am I speaking to you? For the dry bones to come to life, they did not prophesy to themselves. There was a prophetic word that came from a shepherd to say, this is the direction we are taking. Are you understanding that? So for you to enter green pastures, you must be led by the Lord Jesus into a different environment. Tell your neighbor, be led by a good shepherd into your divine land. When Jesus, when God spoke to Moses, God could have just delivered the children of Israel in Egypt. But he told them, rise up, leave Egypt, go to Canaan, the land I have prepared for you. So if they remained in Egypt, they would have died in Egypt while there's a promise of milk and honey. So the word is requiring you to rise up from Egypt. Hallelujah. And go where God is showing you that place called there, a divine environment that will attract the blessing of God for your life. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. Hallelujah. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Let's rise up and off it. You raise me up to walk on storm and sea. Hey there, I'm F.J. Moses, the senior pastor of Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide, based in Midrand, South Africa. And I hope this Spirit Life Kingdom message has blessed you so tremendously that you are going to experience the God's original plan for your life. For more of these Spirit-filled messages, don't hesitate to contact us on the information on your screen. Good morning and be fruitful.